send your spirit, God. It's not by might, not by power, it's by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. TV, Shakaina Glory Waves, TV International. This is uh, Pastor Lea Boy bringing you a wonderful program known as Dominion Grace. And uh, today is an introduction, so I won't go very, very deep, but uh, uh, we have a topic, Prepare for War, Part 1. And my question is, why war in the kingdom of God? Are we called for war? And I'm coming to tell you that yes, as a child of God, when you are born, you don't choose whether you be a soldier. Is Yes, it is the kingdom of peace. Yes, Jesus Christ is the prince of peace. But somebody said also that peace does not come until things are sorted. Praise be to God. Today I want us to uh, look at the necessity, number one. We look at the necessity of war in the kingdom of God. Then we shall look at awareness, what we need to know about ourselves what we need to know about what Christ is saying, what we need to know about this battle. And in the awareness, we need to know, number one, who is your enemy? Because if you are in a battle, you cannot fight against yourself. You can only fight against a force, against a, a, a numbed force, against an army, against and, and there must be something that there is a contention about. That is how battles come. When a nation rises against another, most likely they are fighting over resources, they are fighting over, over uh, some benefits, they are fighting over even uh, the, the land demarcations and the boundaries. They are fighting over the wealth. Who takes what? Uh, the Middle East, there was a time there was a great battle and it is, was over the resources of their, their, their fuel and many other things. Praise be to God. And then we shall know also the weapons. Before you go to the battle, the Bible says that Jesus said that before you uh, approach the enemy, you need to find out you need to do your research concerning your enemy and know how he comes. And uh, uh, again, it says that if the battle, if the battle array, if the battle standard is too high for you, that probably you need to make peace. But I don't think here we are, we can make any peace with our enemy. But it is important also to evaluate yourself and know what kind of a battle, when what kind of weapons that you have. Praise be to God. And then we are going to see that is in a nutshell because later on in the program of Dominion, we shall see in details of the things that we are going to look in overview. That is where we are only in the preliminaries. So again, we are going to see the results expected. Remember, in this battle, we have our armed we have our general, and our general is Jesus Christ. He is our general commander. And what does he say? What does he expect of you as a child of God? Praise be to God. And uh, before we start, we can pray uh, shortly. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because of this short but quality time that you are giving us so that we may share in your word. So that at the end of it all, Lord, we shall be thoroughly furnished, O God, 
to be able to withstand every opposition, to be able to come out as winners and uh, a great success of God. We thank you because of the encouragement. We thank you because of uh, the ability to hear your word and to understand and to retain. May you make our souls to be good soil for your word. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Karibu sana. Uh, when you prepare for war, you must ask, why am I fighting and what will I gain at the end? Because the end sometimes must always uh, uh, justify the means. Is it worth the fighting? Can't I be a child of God and just relax and be me? But I am telling you there is no place. I am telling you there is no place where you shall remain a successful child of God until you overcome some evil. Because why are we saved in the first place? What has saved us? And we are told Jesus Christ is saying that he has overcome the world. He has fought the battle. Even though we shall go through afflictions, even though we shall get contradictions, but Jesus himself is a fighter. He has fought for us. He won the battle there at the cross. And now what is left for us is to receive what he has gotten for us, to be able to run, to run our personal race, fight our personal battle, and come out as winners. And then we shall be able to reign with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not raising uh, weakly sons, sickly sons, sons who cannot fight the battle. Uh, they remember that some says that uh, are he who have sons, they are like quivers of arrows because they return the enemy at the gate. Praise be to God. Uh, therefore, uh, let us think about why war is necessary. War is necessary because there is a domain that you need to take over. We need to fight because we have to take over the kingdom of God. The Bible says in, uh, in the book of Matthew, Matthew 11 verse 12, that since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent shall take, mark that word, shall take it by force. Also underline the word force. Meaning, you will have to put some force. You will have to put some force in your prayer. You will have to put some force to be able to walk in righteousness. It is not an, an excuse me thing. It is not like Nina Oba Nifanya Hivi. It is when you want your children to walk in the ways of God. When you want your own life to be purposeful to be able to attain things of God, they cannot be just gotten on a silver platter. There is a battle that you have to, to fight. Praise be to God. There's somebody who said that there is a race. There is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Praise be to God. So there is a race and there is a battle. There are victories that are awaiting you, child of God, in this very life. So there is the taking over. The kingdom of God has been sat on. Your blessing have been sat on. There is evil exchanges in your life and that is why you are suffering. You are going through some suffering which are not legitimate. You are going through things that you should not be going through. Why? Because the enemy is also a taker. He is an illegal taker. And for you to be able to push him away, I'm telling you, there shall be some force. There shall be battles. There shall be battle techniques. There shall be even battle weapons that shall be applied. One as you feel, praise be to God. Therefore, there is the taking over. Then after taking over, there is a reigning or ruling. Having the dominion, bringing your principles and seeing that they are the principles that are uh, operating. 
They are the principles that are dictating the environment, changing the principles. Hallelujah. There are times when we even take the atmosphere, when it is so dry, we go down and we know what the reason is with God and we are able to change evil seasons to bring the purposes of God to pass. So uh, we have to take dominion in our given territory. If you are a preacher, if you are a career man, if you are a doctor, there are battles that you have already won in the training and there are battles that you have got to win as you execute your duties in this life. If you are a mother, if you are a father, if you are in a family, oh, you will find the very enemy that wants whatever you are, whatever you want to achieve. You want to be a good wife. You want to go to be a good mother. You want your children to be a credible children, children of character. I am telling you, that is the very thing that is being opposed by the enemy. So that is why a fight is a must if you have to achieve. Not unless you just want to be there. And, but you know, by the way, even breathing. This time and this moment in time with corona uh, uh, viruses, we know that even breathing is a battle. There are people who are fighting a battle of breathing and respiratory system because the devil can still literally anything. The Bible says that the, the enemy comes not in John 10.10, 10, but only to kill, still kill and destroy. So there is an enemy you don't have to go looking for the enemy. The enemy has already arrived. <laughs> and that is why it says that the enemy has already come. But Jesus has said, but I have also come. That you may have life and have it in more abundance. How do you get life in abundance in the presence of the enemy? And again, Jesus has said that uh, you cannot enter in a strong man's house unless... You first of all capture him, bind him up, throw him out so that you can get whatever are in his house. Child of God, I come to tell you that an evil man is in the house. An evil man is sitting on your blessing. An evil man is, has, has even locked himself. He has stolen and he has locked himself inside. Your blessings are locked down. How do you get access to your blessings? They have your name on it, yes. But how do you get that? There is a battle to be bought and uh, to be fought and there, is, there are victories that must be won and they shall be won to the glory and honor of God. Praise be to God. So we have to assert ourselves. You have to evacuate. If you want to sit on this, uh, this seat I am in and sit here and do exactly what I'm doing, I must evacuate first. And I'm not, if I'm not willing, then a force must be applied on me to be able to leave the room, to leave the seat for another kingdom to come. Because two kingdoms cannot be in power at the same time. I hope you get that point. So now we go to the word of God uh, in, uh, in Ephesians 6 from verse 10. So that we may know the enemy. Because unless you know the enemy, even if you are, you are fighting, for example, if it is uh, in our nation, Kenya, and they are fighting, we are fighting uh, uh, another nation, you must know the enemy. You must know how they dress. You must know exactly your target or else you shall be able to injure either your own I mean, men or also injure the same people you want to protect. It is very vital that you know your enemy. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6 from verse 10, says that, uh, verse 10 it says, Finally, brethren, Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We shall come to that, the power that we have. Then it says, 
put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we know the, the key, the kingpin of our, the arch enemy is the devil. But now the effects, because the atmosphere, the spiritual reigns, what we see is the product of what kind of the a kingdom is at power. When the kingdom of the devil is at power, these are the wiles that are here. It says that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise be to God. This is our enemies. We are talking of a government. We are talking about a level at which if you are not in the place to fight spiritual wickedness, maybe you are in the level of fighting the rulers in the darkness of this world. And you can be also in a higher level where you are able to fight against powers. I don't know whether you have ever experienced powers, evil powers moving. I read one time, I read a, a, a book I think it was also called like my topic, Prepare for War, by a, a doctor called Mary. And uh, she was, she had really come in, in contact with the powers of darkness and uh, things would move. Things would literally move by themselves. And there is also another, an, another brother who had gone to, to speak in a, in a city. And then when he had slept, uh, he found his... Uh, uh, his bed had been had been brought had been pulled from one end of the room and and it was brought near the 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 door in other words being told can you exit this city and he woke up and said devil i don't care i am going back to sleep and you have to pull me back you have to take this bed back to where it was and he slept and let me tell you, when you have the authority, when you have the power, I am telling you, we, you are not out to trace, you know, like to, to you are not equals with the, these powers. You are above. You must fight at the level where you are more, you are higher than this enemy. And when that brother uh, and that past servant of God declared that this bed must be taken to where it was, and he slept. And sure enough, when he woke up, he found the bed back to where it was. Praise be to God. So when we talk about powers, there are real powers that can, de that can demolish, can do wonders. And as we come to the nearing of the return of Jesus Christ, we shall see, the Bible says that we shall see even fake miracles. But we, we have the real power, and that is the kingdom of God. Praise be to God. And then, uh, after we have known that we are, we are, we are not fight, fighting, I'm not fighting my brother. I'm not fighting the person who are causing trouble to me. I'm, don't, I'm not fighting against a brother who hates me, who has jealous on me. I must go beyond my brother and be able to get the real powers that are against me. My brother is just being used as a vessel. I must know because if I fight my brother, I will lose my brother. But I want to win my brother and I want him also to be delivered, not to be anymore a vessel of the, of, of, of the enemy, but to be now the vessel of God and to be used for every good work. Praise be to God. Uh, and having said about our enemies, then we go to our weapons. Uh, the, let me uh, clarify here that there are weapons that we we, we we are supposed to be ourselves. When we get the character, when we read at the next uh, verse, 
that is verse 14, it's talking about our character being a weapon. Because let me tell you, the moment your character has a loophole, you are down already. You are down with one arrow and you will be normal. So the, 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 the armor or the weapons that we have, those are what we dress. And then they are the weapons that we take and we are able to finish the enemy. And you will find that the first class of, uh, of our armor, it is purely protective. Other than the word of God, it is purely protective. And it's saying from verse 14, it's saying that stand therefore having your loins guard about with truth and having the best plate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit with the which is the word which is the word of god we can extend to 18 the saying praying always with the prayer supplication in the spirit and watching there run to with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praise be to God. Even prayer is a weapon of war. Even perseverance. That is all your, uh, uh, your etiquette, your character, your habits, the way you carry out yourself. Patience. Patience overcomes your emotions. That has to do with your emotions. When you have perseverance, you are able to terrorize so much, so much offenses. And that will show also your maturity. Most of this of who we are, the things we put on ourselves, they will also show how much we are maturing. It is a, a measurement. It is a scale to show how much can you persevere, how much can you uh, how much can you take truth and how can you use that truth together with wisdom? How much are you able to remain on the truth part? We are living in a world where even if you are a child of God, when you are pressed, when you are threatened, to a certain level, you are easily able to be corrupted and maybe alter the truth to be able to escape. So it means that you, you must, it must be an armor. You must know that once you compromise your truth, truthfulness in whatever you do, even in privacy, your integrity, once it is compromised, you must know that you have already dropped a weapon of your warfare. And I'm telling you, the devil will bring you down like in the morning. And then it goes to say that, uh, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, let me say this. To be righteous, if you are asked, are you righteous? We are always constantly being tempted, even in our minds. Even as I'm speaking here, uh, thoughts can come through, can run through me, that they are not righteous, which are not righteous at all. But let me tell you, the only way to walk in righteousness is to walk with the umbrella of Jesus Christ. Understanding, praise be to God, understanding that Jesus Christ has been, was made sin that we may be saved and have his righteousness. We do not have the righteousness of ourselves. That is why we are putting it on. If you can be able to wash yourself, wash your, your, your conscience, wash your mind, wash your everything and not allow. Maybe you would not have also the control of the devil pushing mind in you, 
So what makes you righteous, you must understand, and we shall come to this as a weapon, is the Jesus Christ and his blood, his righteousness, becomes our righteousness, not of our own. Lest anybody should boast is only with Jesus. Let the devil know it is not about me. Let the devil know it is not even my kingdom. It is about the kingdom of God, which is joy, love, and righteousness. And that is the kingdom of God. And then he says, then your feet must be shod with preparation of the gospel. That is another sword. That is an armor. That your feet are not walking barefooted. They have purpose. Where I go, I have purpose. And my purpose always is to carry the kingdom of God. I am already prepared. Whatever comes, I must throw back the kingdom of peace. I must throw back the kingdom of God. Whatever comes my way. The first thought that comes, the first response is of Jesus Christ. What Jesus would have done. What his kingdom tells me. The kingdom principles must be on your feet wherever you go. And the Bible says that blessed are the feet we take, which take the good, uh, and uh, which take the good news of the gospel. Praise be to God. Then it says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. Ah, oh, I'm telling you, this is a very great defensive mechanism. When you are able to see, you are greater. You can almost see, see where things are, are, are going to. You can see the downward, downward trend of, an, of a sickness. You can see the progression of the sickness. You can almost see in the natural where things are running to. You can almost tell where your business is going to. But let me tell you, you can be a woman, you can be a man of faith, where you stand on the word of God and you know the will of God and you declare it by faith and say, by faith I know that I shall stand even though I am sick, even though I have been told that I've been diagnosed in this disease or in that, but I know by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Faith does not come as faith. Faith only comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. What does that say? If you want to grow in faith and be able when you are thrown. <laughs> I remember one time I, I was sleeping and uh, uh, I, I started hearing myself uh, having a, 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 bad, a, bad, uh, a bad sound at my side. And uh, I, I was so scared. And I told my friend, uh, you know what? When I sleep uh, on one side, after I breathe, that is not my breathing. You know, there's a time you wheeze when you are, your chest is congested. My, my, my chest was not congested, but my, my side was producing some very funny noise. Very funny noise like a cat. Wheezing, a very bad wheezing. And it was not my breathing system. So I would rise up and it was very fearful. And I told my sister, now, there's something I must tell you. And I've not told somebody because I didn't want to mention or confirm that thing. And I remember we held hands and we said, we are not confirming you. You arrow, you arrow of disease. We refuse. You will not take place. You will not come into my life in the mighty name of Jesus. And we said, we will, this one we cannot take to hospital. It must be terminated. Just at the door. We shall not listen to you. We shall not allow you to be. You must just evacuate by faith. And you know what? That noise just disappeared like that. When you stand by faith, you shall quench all fiery darts of the wicked. Praise be to God. And then the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is your helmet. Your helmet protects your head, your thinking. Let me tell you, if there is anything in this world 
if there is any battle, it's the battle of mind. There is the battlefield right inside your mind that comes every day, that comes every day. But when you remember the salvation, the salvation that has been bought, not of the perishables, but uh, of uh, unperishable and the powerful and priceless blood of Jesus Christ, it shall protect you. It reminds me that what in, uh, in Philippians uh, uh, 4, 6 that says, do not be anxious. It is the mind. It is the body that, beca- that is gets worried. It is the mind that becomes uh, uh, depressed. It is the mind that ca- be, uh, becomes uh, 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 so nervous about things. But says that be not anxious. When you want to fight anxiety, you must remember salvation. That you have been saved. You are not an ordinary person. There is somebody watching over you. There is somebody that is working for you. The Bible says that up to now I am still at work. That is John, I think, uh, 5.14. That I am still at work. As I see my father work. So, uh, in short, I want to say that your mind shall be garrisoned. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 says that being anxious for nothing but in everything. In prayer, and that is what, uh, again, uh, Ephesians is saying. In prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let all your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses every human understanding shall garrison. Underline that word garrison, your mind and your heart and your body, and everything that pertains to you, you shall be garrisoned. So we have, we have another outer army. Apart from what we put on, when we put on, we attract God's army. We attract God's intervention when we ourselves are arrayed like a soldier, having all the armor that is supposed to be on our bodies. When it, we are in shape, then God comes and takes over. Ah, uh, and the final thing is the results. What is the result expected? If you read verse 13 uh, of Ephesians 6 and verse 13, the Bible says, uh, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Praise be to God. God does not want dead, uh, dead soldiers, wounded soldiers. God wants you after you have done all, after you have wrestled, after you have been thrown down and you stand up, being thrown down, being rolled after, and, and even uh, being uh, uh, pressed. Uh, Corinthians is about being pressed on every side, thrown down, but we are never ever destroyed. God expects a child of God, his child, to come out a hundred percent a success. Praise be to God. And the and the last one is uh, 2 Timothy 3 16, that the word of God is profitable to teach, to give you doctrines, to work with, so that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished, and prepared for every good work. Hallelujah. May God bless you. As you go out, may you be thoroughly furnished through the word of God. Through the word of God. And the Lord shall intervene where you cannot go. The word of God will go. The spirit of God is on your side. The whole kingdom of God is on your side. Praise be to God. That is why after we have done all this, in the next part we shall see the real action in the war. Amen. We shall see how we fight, how we fight with our words. After we are well positioned, then we are able to attack the enemy. May the Lord bless you so much. Once again, I'm Pastor Leah, one boy. I'm an associate pastor in Shekinah Glory. And uh, I, I want also to appreciate uh, my, my, my reverend, uh, Dr. Raphael Monja, who works with us in this journey. And through him, we are also thoroughly furnished. God bless you. See you next time. Send your